Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Storytime with Unky Judas. Thanks for tuning back in. This is part two of a series I really don't even know what to call. Uh, I guess it's just random celebrities who I've smoked weed with and our friend Mud Mustard who is our in-studio guest for these stories uh, just asked me to tell her the story of how I met Dax Riggs, which leads into the story of how I met John Crosby, who is the mastermind behind a project known as VAST, one of my all-time favorite bands. It's an acronym that stands for Visual Audio Sensory Theater. We also, in the background, are still trying to complete Donkey Kong Country and possibly even move on to number two and three, depending on how this goes. So part two. I was also with Rudiger. It's kind of funny how he and I coincidentally just have this sort of luck. We went to go see Vast, who I just kind of introduced you to, and a lot of people out there may or may not recognize them. They had one hit called Touched back in the late 90s. It was like 98, and it was a big one. So anyways, this was uh, also kind of more earlier 2000s, and we were with a couple other friends, two people that I lived with at the time, and they were our ride and for some reason, once John Crosby announced his last song, Rudiger and I looked at each other and just started walking backwards towards the back doors. Literally backwards? Yeah, like Homer Simpson into the bush sort of thing. We what just like in faded the into the crowd and left the two people who were our ride <laughs> to watch the end song. Um, I actually brought a couple of album covers with me just in case I met the band. This was at a venue called The Avalon, which also does not exist anymore. It was made out of an old theater. It was a really fucking cool venue. I actually really liked The Avalon, and it was an easy place to meet the band who you went to go see because they had this sort of a driveway that went all the way behind the venue that was still public access. It wasn't gated off, so any cars could still drive through the this fenced what looked like a fenced-off area, but wasn't. There was still a bunch of security guys there where, you know, kind of standing around the tour buses, but he and I look like security guys. We look like we belong there. So we straight up just walked around the fence, walked down the driveway, walked past the security guys. We gave them a nod. They gave us a nod. You know, like... This actually we, does not surprise me. Yeah, we just walked in like we fucking owned the place, like we fucking belonged there, and we saw the drummer... On, there's two doors. There's the closest one as we walk up, and then there's the stretch of the venue, the back wall, and then there's the far door, and then more fencing that leads out the other side of the driveway, you know, to the other block. And so um, we see the drummer talking to somebody through the chain link fence. So obviously by the time we've got to the back, the band's done. And he goes inside this door right before we can actually talk to him. And we both look at each other. We're standing right outside the door. And I'm like, do you have a pen? Because Rudiger always has a pen. Because he's a tattoo guy, you know? And I usually have a pen on me. I even brought a couple of vast album covers just in case I ran into the guy. And I didn't bring a fucking Sharpie. And so we're both just patting our pockets, and we look down. Lo and behold, there's a goddamn Bic laying right there on the fucking asphalt right in front of the door. Holy shit. It probably fell out of your pocket. No, it didn't. Honestly. I know I didn't have a pen, and he knew he didn't have one. And we just looked down, and whoa, there it is. Yeah, it's just this beam of sunshine. And so we open the door, and we go down this long, kind of a longer hallway that leads to, like, we see light, and then we see the stage, and we're like, oh, shit, we went too far. And we can see people starting to clear out of the fucking, you know, the dance floor, and people putting away the amps and shit. So we start heading back towards the door we came in, and about halfway down this dark hallway, again, a beam of light, this time literally comes, sh yes, exactly, comes shining through this kind of a crack, an L-shaped crack in the wall. So we notice that there's actually this board that's just stuck to some hinges and has been painted black that's covering this big fucking hole in the wall. 
and there's a little bit of light coming from behind this board. So yeah, just ghetto as shit in, in the back of this old fucking theater that's been turned into a venue. Fucking loving it, loving it. You know, like uh, how could this get more awesome? So we both look at each other again, just standing outside the door, have another moment like, this is it, dude. You know that there's nowhere else he could have gone. He wasn't on stage. He's not just going to go out into the crowd. He's behind that fucking door. And then instead of asking for a pen, I'm like, do you have any weed? I immediately think back to the Dax Riggs incident. That was what got us friends with him. So I just like... This will get us friends with these guys. And he did actually have a nugget you in his pocket. So I'm Put just like, loose. dude, all you got to do is poke your head through that crack and say, do you guys want to smoke? And that's exactly what he did. He just said, I'm sorry to bother you, but do you guys smoke wheat? And they're just like, come in. And it's the drummer with John fucking Crosby himself and, like, the owner of the venue. And they're just talking about, like, the pay cuts and everything. But the drummer's just minding his own business. And he's got one of those little teeny, like, construction worker. Like, it almost looks like a binky. Has this little rubber fucking nub on the end of it that's the mouthpiece. And then it's just this little sort of a metal cone. They're teeny, little sneak a But you can still fit a decent amount of weed in them. And that's all he's been smoking. Because, again, folks, weed was much more frowned upon 15 years ago than it is now. We've actually come a long ways since this happened. So back then, you really didn't want to travel with it. And there's still a lot of states that you don't want to travel. You would, like, walk three miles away from your house and hide in a bush, like, way away from everybody. And, like, blow it into your coat like a fucking freak. Or blow it through one of those toilet paper rolls with oh. fucking dryer sheets oh, stuffed ever, like, in it. You ever like blow it into a pillow and it leaves like that weird mark? Yeah, <laughs> you learn not to do that. It's not very cute. There's a couple things you learn not to do pretty quick. But anyways, <laughs> um, this was not one of them. If ever you just see a fucking ray of light <laughs> peeming through a door in a dark alleyway in an abandoned theater, Follow open the it up and ask if they want to smoke weed, kids. That's what you do. Because then you get to meet the band. So after the the owner of the um, of the venue left, John Crosby turned around and he sat and talked with us for a little bit. I got to shake his hand. I got so then John Crosby left. He didn't like uh, actually mixing weed and alcohol. He says it makes him sick, and um, he invited us to chill with him afterwards. But neither of us had a car, if you remember. Our fucking rides had been left at the Is stage this another side. Story? And <laughs> well, no, it should oh. have been and could have been. But unfortunately, yeah. no. We could have actually chilled with Vast for the rest of the night. We got to hang out with the drummer for a little bit longer, because he was the one that was actually smoking. So he loaded a little, we loaded a little. He told us about their upcoming plans for the next several years. Like we knew about albums that hadn't even been released yet years before they came out. Like the album April, we knew about way, 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 way the fuck before the, that album came out. In fact, I almost forgot about it by the time it was released. I thought you um, dreamt it, eh? So yeah, almost. So that was really fucking cool. Um, again... All I can say is, I don't really go for the autograph thing, but every now and then I'm kind of a douche, and I'm, you know, hey, what you signed is. Sign my I really do look up to you. I fucking love what you do. And I know you've heard this a million fucking times, and you're not going to remember me at all. I don't care. I just, you know, thank you for what you do and the inspiration you've brought into my life. And I'm saying that to you, John Crosby and Dax Riggs, and whoever we discuss next, because you are all huge inspirations. And it's just fucking amazing to say that I've at least got to spend a little bit of personal time with you as a human being. Thank you all for listening. Remember to hit like and subscribe at the bottom of this video. And stay tuned for part three where we get to meet Gogo Bordello here on Storytime with Unky Judy.